Right, good morning and welcome to this meeting of the local review body of the 28th of October 2020. I can confirm the meeting has been properly called and is correct. Can I please ask members to appoint a chair for the meeting? I'd like to appoint Archer Driver if that's, uh, would, if anyone would prepare a second. Yeah, okay. okay, so um, if that's okay, Claire. Yes, thank you, Councillor Dreibrow. Okay, so welcome everybody to this local review board meeting. Um, what we'll do is we'll adjourn for five minutes until we get Jeff uh, back in, uh, and and then we'll start the meeting. Okay.
about the technical hitches there. Um, and Jeff's now with us. So, Claire, can I hand over to you to go through the sederant and apologies and any declarations of interest? Okay, thank you, Chair. Five members present via Teams this morning. Um, I'll ask you to take us through the documents and the papers of the meeting then, thanks. Just to confirm, did members have any declarations of interest? Any members? No. Nope. Uh, Pauline? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Claire. The only thing I wanted to um, inform you about was that Mr Hislop did call me a couple of days ago um, to ask if I had any questions regarding the case. I said I couldn't discuss it with him um, and that was really the end of the conversation. I don't know if he said he was calling the rest of you, but I explained that none of us could discuss the case. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I think, I think that's the case. Henry? You're still on mute. Apologies. Yeah, sorry, Chair. I, th I think it's just uh, worth noting that um, previously when I was an agent, I would have come across Mr McCall, the agent, for this particular the application but I don't I don't think that merits uh, any other than just a mention that I'm aware of plenty of agents through my working life. Okay thanks very much. Okay Claire can we continue with the documentation and papers of the meeting? Okay certainly Chair. Uh, I can confirm we have one notice of review for consideration today that being item four Brimhill Farm, Brimhill Road, Loch Maven, refusal applying permission in principle for erection of dwelling house 191853 PIP. You have your uh, usual documents in your papers, your notice of review, report and handling, observations of appointed officer, the comments of the applicant's agent, uh, the application form. Uh, also, just uh, to make it clear, I should uh, make reference to page 127 in your papers, which um, signifies that there's exempt information which has been provided to all members, if you wish to discuss that in detail, you should consider excluding the public in terms of section 50A4 and paragraph 6 of the part 1 of schedule 7A of the Local Government Scotland Act as it contains um, financial information. You also have the decision notice of the Council, the relevant extracts of the Local Development Plan to, and the photos of the application site and locality. The grounds of refusal on, in this case are the proposed development fails to meet the criteria in Dumfries and Galway Local Development Plan 2 Policy H3 and Associated Supplementary Guidance, which only permits the erection of new dwelling houses in the countryside as a house of a retiring farmer if the proposed dwelling house is in an acceptable location within the land holding normally a short walking distance from the from farm hub, the indicative position of the proposed dwelling house on the western edge of the application site with its elevated position above the existing house, existing farmhouse and steading at Broomhill Farm, 250 metres to the east and Loch Maven, 250 metres to the west, is considered to be physically and visually separate within the wider landscape contrary to this policy and where other more appropriate development opportunities exist within the farm holding. Furthermore, the indicative house position of the dwelling house noted drawing um, received on the 9th of December 2019 fails to meet with LDP policy OP2, design quality and placemaking and associated supplementary guidance in that the proposed location does not have regard to the existing form and character, does not respect the important physical and landscape features of the site and its vicinity in order to integrate development well into the landscape. Uh, the drawings submitted with that application are not sufficiently accurate or detailed or noted to scale to allow for the proper consideration of the proposal and further detailed drawings requested have not been submitted regarding the precise boundary of the application site. The requested method of determination is that it should be on the basis of the review documents only with no further procedure. The grounds stated in the notice of review are in summary. The proposal meets all the criteria of 
policy H3 and supplementary guidance for the retirement succession of a viable farm unit, particularly the location of the proposed house on, on the farm unit. The, pr the principle of a house is supported under policy H3 as per the report and handling at 4.6. The officers have accepted we have already complied with all seven of the requirements below the applicant is of retirement age, the site is on farmland owned and actively farmed by him, factual figures were provided to show that the current farm is viable and has been over a number of preceding years and will con continue to be so in the future. Evidence was provided to show that the farm is to be transferred to an eligible farm family member. The existing farmhouse is required for the eligible family member to move into. The house will be sited within a short walking distance from the farm hall, which will be extended to allow for the needs of modern farming. It has also been demonstrated that there are no suitable redundant tr traditional buildings within the existing hub that can be renovated to allow for conversion. The Initial paragraph of the supplementary guidance focuses on the retiring farmer to remain on the land where they continue to make a valuable contribution to the farming enterprise. This site would enable the retiring farmer to observe animals and crops where he can pass on his experience and guidance to his successor. The proposal is essential at this location to allow him to observe much more of the farmland, crops and livestock as well as the existing proposed extension of steading more than it is possible any other location in the farm. Advancing years and decreasing mobility make the location even more important for the retiring farmer to be most used as he can possibly be. Animal welfare, both cattle and sheep can often be saved from distress and death if observed, for example, a beast on its own or an upturned ewe. Crops, arable crops can be destroyed by geese, crows, pigeons, rabbits, etc. Crops can be decimated to the best and not quickly noticed. And fire risk, it is recommended for a hay shed to be a safe distance to the northwest of the cattle buildings. As the prevailing wind direction is most, mostly from the southwest, the hay shed is in the site of this pr proposed house. Crime prevention, previous thefts have occurred. Crime watch advice is that being able to to be seen and be seen is one of the main deterrents in reducing crime. Additionally, from the new house, house site, the steading entrances and farmhouses entrance can be seen. This is why the site is essential so that the retiring farmer can perform the duty and the new house is specifically prescribed for. Broomhill farmhouse and stated site chosen by the case officer both face in exactly the same direction and face in the opposite direction from the farm buildings present and proposed. The site has been chosen not for the long distance views, but selected as a most appropriate location to provide for animal welfare, crop visibility and steading security. Whilst the officer's report makes reference to the proposed house site being considerably higher than the existing farmhouse, the steading levels taken demonstrate that there, that there is less than one metre difference in the height between these locations. The proposed site is considered to be by the case officer to be physical and visually separate. This will not be the case as proposed that a new roadway will link the existing steading to a proposed new hay shed and Broomhill stack as it is proposed to continue this new roadway to propose new house by private road. There would be a communal entrance to, to the slack to both the proposed house and the proposed new steading. In the case officer's report, it recommends a visually less prominent site immediately to the east of Broomhill Farmhouse and Steading, but there is no reasons whatsoever why the house should be at less prominent site as the proposed house will become an important part of the farming operation and therefore the location proposed is the most suitable to fulfil this requirement. The location allows the retiring farmer to observe and give advice to assist and to support the next generation and allows him to continue to have real involvement in the farming operation and be the most use he can be. The proposed house sites needs to be at, in this location whilst at the same time being respectful to the planning guidelines. The only issue in this case in the refusal notice is the location of the house and it has been demonstrated that this selected site is the one which best suits the needs of the farm and owners of the farming operation. You have the, all the relevant development plan policies, OP1, OP2, OP3, H3, HE3, NE8, IN8, IN9 and the uh, relevant LDP supplementary guidance in your papers. So. The main issue for the LRB 
uh, to consider. Does the proposal comply with the terms of the development plan in principle? In particular, does the proposal meet the terms of LDP policy H3 and LDP 2 supplementary guidance on housing in the countryside in principle, noting that, the, noting that this is a proposal for a retiring farmer? Turning to the detail of the proposal, does the proposal location of the dwelling house accord with the terms of LDP 2 policy H3 and LDP 2 supplementary guidance on housing in the countryside? Specifically, is the site a short walking distance from the farm hub? Would it be physically and visually separate from the farm hub? Are there more appropriate development locations within this farm holding? If it is considered that the proposal represents a departure from the terms of the development, development plan, are there compelling reasons to justify the location of the dwelling house at the proposed site and a set of reasons to justify such a decision? Are the submitted drawings forming part of this review now of sufficient accuracy and detail to enable proper consideration of the, this proposal? So, having outlined the documents within your papers, and it falls to the LRP to determine if it has sufficient information to consider the review. It is confirmed that, that, that there will be no representations from any party held today. The LRP has the following options. It can decide if it has sufficient information before it to enable it to determine the review today. Represent further information in the form of written representations. The LRB would, would be required to state precisely what information it was seeking and who would provide it. Resolve to hold a hearing, again specifying who would be invited to speak and on what matters. Resolve to hold a site visit. Um, which could be done in conjunction with any of the above, but which would not allow a decision to be made today. And if the local review body resolves it has sufficient information and no further procedure is required, then you have the full powers to uphold, reverse or vary a determination. The decision notice would include a statement of the terms in which the planning authority had decided the case reviewed. You have a planning advisor present at your meeting today. He's here to assist for this item. It's confirmed he has not had any involvement in this case. and is not the case officer or the appointed officer for this application. He is here purely to provide independent advice on matters of, of planning policy to the local review body. So members are clear, no further clarification is required. I'll ask the chair now to lead the debate and in the first instance to lead the local review body through the agenda papers together to decide if you have sufficient information to make a determination today. Thank, thank you, Claire, for that. Um, I'm just looking at the, 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 the agenda papers, uh, members, and if we go through them at the different parts and see if you have got any points of clarification that you require. So in the index of context, we have the notice of review and related documents, which is pages 13 to 27. Are there any uh, points of clarification required? No. Okay. Report on handling and related correspondence, pages 29 to 62. Are there any points of clarification required? Jeff? On page 33, Archie, it makes reference at the very top to a, a previous planning application, 14P40291 which was a change of use, and that was granted to, to create a dwelling house, and that was granted subject to conditions. So what's happened to that application? It's obviously lapsed now since it's more than yeah. three or five years. Why is that not being taken up as the position for the uh, the dwelling house? Because obviously there were buildings or are buildings which are capable of being converted. Billy, have you got any information on that? Chair, I think you'll find that the the question of that plan information is actually addressed in the papers. Um, the appointed officer refers to it, I think, in his appointed officer comments, uh, and the applicant or appellant responds to those comments in his subsequent comments on the comments of, uh, made by the appointed officer. Uh, and I think the claim was, although it's perhaps not for me to say, because I'm only here to advise on policy, um, but there was an argument made that it was to be used for uh, other than accommodation, a farm office or the like. But I think you will find that th th this is all addressed in the papers. Okay. 
Jeff? Mm, we're about in the papers, Billy, because I can't. I, I haven't uh, been able to locate it. Find your appointed officer's comments. That's page 65. Bill. I'm, afraid, I'm afraid, Chair, I'm at a slight disadvantage because I do not have a set of papers that no, corresponds with yours. <laughs> okay. So it's either a slight disadvantage or a major disadvantage. I think that's probably a major disadvantage, really. Maybe something we can come back to later on then. Um, yes, I, I, apologies, Chair. I'll see if I can find it. I'm sure I read something about it when I was reading um, the, the delegated report and the comments. It may be on the comments of applicants, agent observation appointed officers, pages 69 to 97 later on. Yep. Okay, so. Um, we were at uh, number three, observations of the point of officers and the applicant's agent notice of review, which is pages 63 to 68. Um, are there any sort of clarification points required by members? Okay, the next one is comments of applications and observations of the appointed officers report, uh, pages 69 to 97. Archie, just a moment. Can I go yep. back to six, page 68? 68, yeah. Okay, 225 refers to the uh, the legal nature of the, uh, the legal status of planning drawings. Has that now been rectified? It says the hand-drawn plans are not for recognised scale and base, and the paragraph in the delegated report and not acceptable misreason for refusal remains pertinent. Has that been rectified by way of uh, improved drawings? I was having a look through the um, all the attachments in the actual application earlier on, and I never saw any sort of hand drawings. I mean, I, I wasn't specifically looking for hand drawings in any lab, but I never saw any hand drawings. They were all sort of to scale and things like that, Jeff. So right. I, 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 I'm, it's only my opinion that, that although I never saw them, um, they may be there somewhere. However, all I saw was was scaled versions of yeah. plans. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I didn't see. You know, any any drawings which have been replaced by better drawings. That's why mm. I'm querying with whether the drawings that's referred to as not being acceptable are the ones yeah. which are actually within the report. And they want to be giving Billy another action in case he's not got the same papers as us, like you. <laughs> Chair, I think my reading of the situation was would be that you can assume that that is not an issue right. for you to consider today. That's lovely. Thank you. Okay. All right, so um, comment of the applicant's agents on observation of the point of officers, pages 69 and 97. Any, any points of clarification on that? Then the planning application form submitted on 27th of November and associated plans and support and information, pages 99 to 131. Any points of clarification? Can I just maybe have one point of clarification, Billy, and it's, it's advice, please. This is a planning in principle um, application, um, yet there's a refusal. Um, I, I, my understanding that planning in principles would, would be a discussion between officers, planning officers and the applicant or agent to move that forward to a full application. No, Chair, that would not be the procedure. Uh, if planning permission in principle is granted, it is subject to a number of standard conditions that require further applications for matters reserved by conditions of the permission in principle. Uh, right. And those would cover such things as siting, design, um, mater uh, finishes, materials, um, landscaping and the like. Um, right. You would also potentially have other conditions attached to that planning permission in principle. So. 
the planning permission principle by definition establishes the principle of a dwelling house there and in that permission principle other matters are reserved and require the submission of further applications to discharge those conditions. And, and they would be agreed by the appropriate officer? Yes. Thank you. Right. Um, so the decision notice from Dumfries and Galloway Council, pages 133 to 139, any um, points of clarification on that? No. And then we have the relevant extracts for Dumfries and Galloway Local Development Plan 2, pages 141 to 151. Any points of clarification on that? And then we have the photos. Now, um, normally we would show the photos again at the local review body. Billy, have you got them? Okay. Yes, Chair, I've got copies of the photographs. Okay, thank you. Can can we go through the photographs then, please? Oh, I... I wasn't aware that I was to take you through the photographs. No, no, it's Ju Julie's, Julie's actually got... All oh, right, up. right, sorry, sorry. I'm sorry, sorry, Bill. So, um, apparently, uh, apparently it's stuck in a corner on my thing, so I, need, I think you need to pin it, didn't you? Okay, so so we have we have the first photograph, we've got one aerial photograph showing field boundaries and access at Broomhill Farm. Is anybody else taking this through this or not? Chair, can we have the, um, the photos put to uh, transfer to our screen by Julie? Have you have you not got them on your screen? I've got it on my screen, but it's in a wee box. I'm talking okay, so about. If you, if you go, sorry. Oh. Some something's happening. But if you go to that wee box, Andrew, and then go to the wee three dots in the corner, and then say pin. All oh, right. Yep. Um, it's come up as a blank screen on mine at the moment, so. Great. I, I see what you mean, though. I can pin it. That, that, that's helpful, Chair. Thank you. All right. OK. So the first one is the aerial photograph showing the field boundaries and access at Broomhill oh. Farm in Edge of Loch Mabin. Can everybody see that OK? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Can we go to the next? I can't. I can't. You can't. Yeah. And I can't see where you're pinning on my uh, iPhone. On your phone. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, I mean, you've got the photographs in the back of your papers, Jeff. I know they're black and white, like, yeah, but... <laughs> it's certainly very black. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't seem to have a spin option. Okay. Are you okay if we just go through them then and... Yeah, and okay. Talk, ...talk you through them? Yeah. Um, okay, so we move to the next one then, please. That's the older area photograph showing Broomhill Slack. We'll clearly the boundary at Broomhill Farm and the older field boundaries as well as the edge of Loch Mabin can be seen on the left hand side of the photograph. Yep. Yeah, can we go to the next one, please. So this is a, a view from the lay-by on the B7020, public road looking southwards towards the application site. Um, you can see Broomhill Farm, the application site, East Park Proposed Steading and West Park Proposed House, and then the slack dip, as it's called, in, in, in the centre of that. That foreground. Next one, please. Uh, a view near the proposed dwelling house site looking along the U66A public road, Broomhill Road, towards Broomhill Farm. The red car is parked at the gate leading to the area noted on submitted plans as Broomhill Slack, which is located approximately 200 metres from the West Steading entrance at Broomhill Farm. Yeah, do the next one, please. We've got a view taken from the edge of the gate of Broomhill Slack, uh, shown by the red car in the previous image. Uh, so that's where it will have been on that side. Um, next one, please. Okay, the view from Broomhill Slack looking to westwards towards the proposed dwelling site. Um, okay, next one, please. The view of the application site on, on RHS from U66 Broomhill Road, looking westwards towards Loch Mabin. Um, you'll see the exit to the field. Uh, OK, move on. The view looking towards Broomhill Farm, showing the application site on the left-hand side. Sure it's on the left-hand side? 
Okay, move to the next one, please. View from the existing field gate shown the edge of the application site when looking westwards towards Loch Mabin. Next one, please. Uh, view from the existing field gate showing the edge of the application site when looking eastwards with Broomhill Farm visible on the right hand side. You'll just see that over the top of the hedge there where the, the, the lamp post is or the, the telephone post is. Okay, next one, please. The view from the entrance to the existing steading complex at Broomhill Farm looking eastwards across area identified as potentially stead and extension. Um, and that's the new steading as opposed to the new. Uh, house area. I believe that's already been agreed um, as part of the planning process. Is that correct, Billy? Sorry, Chair, could you just repeat that question? The application site for the pro proposed new steading area has been agreed in another application, hasn't it? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Next slide, please. So Broomhouse Farm and Steading looking northwest along the U66A Broomhill Road. Okay, next one. And that's Broomhouse Farmhouse. The large tree on the right hand side shows the line of the original garden boundary. The existing steading buildings are located behind the farmhouse. And the tree in the centre middle distance shows the edge of the existing steading. Okay, next one, please. Um, the view of the area in front of Broomhill Farm historical map records indicate that this garden area has been extended, but there is no record of planning permission for this. The large trees in the centre of the picture show this former cartilage boundary and the land in the foreground previously formed part of a wider field. Next one, please. And the view from the U60 showing the former garden access point now blocked by a propped metal gate. Next one, please. And that's it. OK. So, members, we've, we've all um, seen the uh, information before us in the reports. We've seen the photographs. Um, I think we have enough information to make a decision today, but I'm open up to Evan. Billy, do you want to say something? Your hands up. Billy Murray, you're on mute if you're if you're talking. Yes, sorry, Chair. It was just to clarify on the, the original query about the planning permission for the alternative development, um, the, the 2014 permission. Uh, it is addressed um, in par the last bullet point in paragraph 4.4 .4 of the report on handling, um, where it says the existing farmhouse will continue to be used as the main farmhouse on the farm, brackets intended to be occupied by the applicant's son, close brackets, and there are no other development or conversion opportunities available on the farm unit of Broom Hill, which was confirmed in a letter and noted on submitted drawing 83173002, which notes the intention to use the building next to Broom Hill Farmhouse, which was the building referred to in 14P40291, is now to be used as the farm office. So then on that basis, the appellant was saying um, because they were going to use it as a farm office, it was no longer an alternative option for them to provide residential accommodation. And a, a, a bit of an apology, it was addressed uh, elsewhere, but it was actually in papers that are not before you. It was in, I read through all the background and then it was discussed in the pre-application inquiry, which is not something that's before you today. Okay, thank you, Robert Billy. Jeff? So has it been converted into a farm office or is it still in the situation it was when that um, initial application was put in, Billy? I have no information on that, Council Lever. Mm. I did I did see within the paperwork that there, there's, you know, in the actual house um, where you saw the application, the actual Broomhouse farm itself, Jeff, that there was a load of boxes with A through EF or something in it. And there is a, an office part in that, that particular thing as well. Now, I don't know if that's part of this planning and principle application. I don't think it is because it's a, a separate house to uh, the application uh, where it is. But there is a sort of box, um, there's six or seven boxes on the actual Broomhill farm saying what they are and index what A through AF actually is. Right. 
Well, I don't know if this is the appropriate point to raise, Mr. Hartley, but the um, the officer makes reference to a preferred site to the east of the uh, the existing farmhouse. Is that actually identified anywhere? Um, the only thing I could suggest is if we go through the the pictures again and yeah. see if there's anything in there, but I, I don't I don't see that. I never saw it anywhere in the in the papers. Um, but we've got to make a decision on on what's in front of us today, you know, um, rather than rather than sort of give advice to the agent or the applicant. Pauline. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, do, I think this question could be relevant to uh, Billy Murray, but could you clarify, please? Is there an actual minimum? I couldn't find details on this anywhere. Minimum or maximum meterage from a current steading that farm development should be sticking to? You know, are there any regulations on that with LDP2, H3 and um, OP2, for example, Billy? Could you just clarify the meter, the sort of maximum and minimum meterage that's usually recommended, please? Thank you. Um, yes, Chair, there is no specific distance uh, anywhere in policy or guidance. I thought that because I couldn't find it. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. Um, Andrew? Thanks, Chair. It's a question for Barry. So, uh, see this being applying in principle, if we were minded to uh, let this go through today and they have to come back, have we put any agreement on if it could be a two-story house or, or does that come later on? Because one of the issues, I believe, is that it would be higher than the current setting. Could that be addressed by it being a bungalow house or or anything? Just for an answer on that, please. Really? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, as I said earlier, when you grant planning permission in principle, uh, it is subject to a set of standard conditions uh, requiring further applications to provide details uh, known as reserve matters in shorthand. Now, the standard conditions are for layout and landscaping. Now, it's not unusual for us as officers to add a further condition after these standard conditions to cover any particular matters relevant to a specific site. Uh, for example, um, to pick up on what Councillor Justy is saying, um, it's not unusual in my experience if, if there was, if you felt that a two-storey house was going to be too high you could put a condition in there that says something the lines of notwithstanding the requirements of conditions X, Y, Z above, uh, any house uh, shall be single storey or storey and a half, its design shall reflect uh, the rural location, that kind of thing. So the simple answer to Councillor Justy is yes, uh, you could uh, specify any particular matters that you felt were important on that site in addition to the standard conditions. Okay, Henry, you want to come in? Thank you, Chair. Uh, again, it's for uh, Billy for a bit of clarity. The In the appeal, it suggested that the elevation difference is something like one metre. I think it said it was one metre in difference, where the case, case officer, I don't think anywhere has confirmed other than they said it was in an elevated position. Now, the appellant has come back with a specific height difference. Uh, can you confirm that that is, is accurate? Because when you're getting something of a metre, um, you can certainly uh, interpret elevated as anything higher, but elevated gives you an impression of something significantly higher than one metre over a distance of 275. So I'm just wondering if you could maybe clarify uh, what the officer's um, interpretation of elevated actually means. Uh, I think your question is not for me because you're asking me about an officer's interpretation. Um, I don't think it's for me to answer that. All I can say is that factually, I think the officer's original statements were made on the basis of contours. Um, the, there is a, 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 a plan produced by the case officer, which identifies the contours. I think we're going to be 50, 53 at the farm, and there's a 60 metre contour at um, the site. 
Um, that's obviously been a matter of dispute. And as you say, further information has been provided by the applicant, um, whereby they have taken the levels. Um, beyond that, I don't think there's really anything further I can say um, in terms of what the actual difference in height is, because by definition, I have not been involved in this case, so I, I, I don't know the minute detail of, of the levels. Um, no further comment has been made by the appointed officer on that point, so uh, I think it's open to you to, uh, to accept um, what's been stated by the, the, the appellant. Thank you, Billy. That's um, that's where I was coming from, yeah, because I, I didn't see any counter to the evidence pr provided by the appellant. Thank you. Jeff, you get your answer for earlier on? Uh, I suppose so. <laughs> okay. I'm still not right. convinced, though. Right, okay. Um, well, members, do, do we have enough information in front of us to make a decision today? That's the first question I'm going to ask you. I think we have. Mm. Oin? Yeah, thanks, Chair. I was just going to ask the question. You know, we see in the report that the drawings were considered to be not sufficiently accurate, and I know, Archie, you've managed to access these. You know, might it be the case that we need a better submission of drawings? I'm sure that might incur a cost to the applicant, but it's a, it's a difficult decision to make when we can't actually see what's being proposed in effect. Yeah, but I think what you can do, I think what Billy said earlier on is that um, if, if you require, because it's planning in principle, you will require, you know, better drawings and things like that as part of the conditions that you go forward and then we make sure it's, for instance, um, and, and I'm not suggesting this in any way at the moment, um, it could be a one tier level, a one and a half floor right. um, building as opposed to anything else. So, Billy, you, you try in there. No, but but since you've asked, I think I would just clarify um, that in terms of an application for planning permission in principle, all that the applicant really needs to submit is a red line plan showing the site. Mm -hmm. Nothing further is required. They can provide indicative drawings if they wish or other drawings, but all that is actually required to validate an application for planning permission in principle is a red line site drawing. However, it must be said that that is also the only thing that can't be changed in the further applications. Yeah. You know, so the site boundaries are not uh, up for variance in the further applications. The site boundaries, as defined in the planning permission in principle, have to remain the same. But under, <clears throat> but under the delegated powers to the officers, Billy, that, that they would require some some plans and things like that if planning in principle was agreed. Absolutely. When the further applications are made, they have to produce plans to the standard that would be required for a normal full application. Elevations, floor plans, landscaping, layout, everything. Okay, good. Um, okay, members, uh, uh, are we happy enough at that response then uh, for its planning in principle um, to move forward with this, this particular uh, LRB application? I, I, yes. Right. right. So, Jeff, did you want to come in there? No, no I'm just no. agreeing with Yeah, okay. So, I haven't, haven't looked at all the papers and, and the photographs and things like that. It would be my preferred option that this actually, um, the refusal is actually reversed because I think it principally it meets all of the requirements under H3 for farmers. Um, I think the conditions should be made by the officers. However, I would suggest that one of the conditions that would be no more than one and a half house height um, because of the, 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 the one metre uh, difference in height of the, the application. I think the necessary conditions for officers should be left to the planning officers in this particular case. Um, uh, and in this case, Billy, I would presume we would be having an exem exemption to policy if that was to go forward. You mean a departure from policy? Yes, sorry, a departure, yeah. Yes, yes, you would. But yeah. it's, it's open to you to make that decision today. You're the decision-making body. So in, in, in that case, um, members, I, I would say that uh, as an exemption to policy, as, a, as opposed to a departure from policy, but there again, I'm, I'll take Billy's advice on that. He's a planning officer, not me, um, that, that, that we, we, over, uh, we reverse the... Um, 
decision to refuse and to accept the application with the necessary conditions put in place by the uh, the planning officers um and and that should be um agreed between the uh, the the um the officers and and the um, agent in this case jeff yeah i think what i would comment uh, archie was that the guidance is very woolly on this as pauline says you know what constitutes a a short walk from one place to another and what constitutes an elevated position yeah. you know it's all judgmental isn't it so uh, I mean, Absolutely. it's something which we can handle, but I think uh, it's something which uh, the guidance actually fails us on. Yeah. And I think, I think mainly, be, uh, and, and, and obviously it's, it's 250 metres or something from the farmyard, but there's a steading going up there for ba uh, bales of hay and all that. There has to be a, a clear distance for fire safety. There has to be a clear distance for animal security. And, and 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 livestock security, as, as well as you know, actual farm assets, as well as you know anything else. So that would be the reason why I would be sort of saying it, it it's reversed. I don't know if anybody has an, any alternate views. Billy, sure. I think just to comment on what uh, you are proposing as uh, as um, an exception or a, a departure from policy. Uh, I think perhaps if you are minded to reverse the decision, um, the reason that the board would give would be more along the lines of, on the basis of the information presented, uh, the, the local review board body um, believe that the proposal does comply with policy, in particular, with particular regard to the siting, because in terms of the, the situation as it is at the moment, the appointed officer and the case officer have accepted um, the principle of a dwelling house in terms of justification for a retired farmer and all the criteria of the viability of the, the holding, etc. The key issue is the siting. So I think uh, the, the reason given by the review body would be um, that they believed that the siting did meet the guidance, rather than say it was an exception to that policy, just say that on the basis of the information before you, you believe that it does meet the guidance. Okay, thank you for that, Billy, and I will take your advice on that. Um, Pauline and then Henry. Just give him a hand. Yeah. Now you've muted yourself. <laughs> Sorry, thanks. Thanks, Chair. Um, just something we probably all need to take on board here, and again, I probably need Billy to guide me here. It, with regards to H3 and HDP2 supplementary guidance, it is separate to the hub, and there were no hugely compelling reasons given for that. I'm minded to go with what you're saying, Archie. However, in the future, if it does come to stage two, is there something within planning that can always um, have some sort of level, I don't want to use the word control, with regards to if and when that farm is ever sold on, would it always be sold as one unit? Or does that give the applicant the ability to sell that separated um building that's 250 metres to the east as a separate and private um, residence. That's well, really my, my, my understanding, Pauline, is that when you come to like retirement houses for farmers and things like that, it must stay within the the, um, the farm steading. Billy, can you clarify that? Yes. Um, Councillor Drysdale has, has touched upon uh, probably the key issue uh, in, in, in this application uh, and others like it. Um, the situation has changed markedly in policy and guidance, in terms of policy and guidance since the Scottish Government um, policy changed in respect of um, legal agreements tying um, agricultural dwellings to land holdings and occupancy conditions. Um, so planning obligations tying a new house to a farm hold, holding are no longer used. Occupancy conditions are no longer used um, for retirement dwellings. So for that reason, it, it, it's for those reasons that it becomes critical um, that a house is cited um, so that it has some clear and natural connection with the existing farm, so that it reads with the farm. Um, I don't disagree that the wording of the guidance is, um, to give it the benefit of doubt, open to interpretation. 
Um, but I think that's the key issue that it, it's the new house has got to have some obvious and and um, natural link to the farm. In other words, when when a stranger looks at that house, do they read it with the farm staring, or is it just um, you know, sporadic residential development in the countryside? Is it just a farm? So because we don't use legal agreements or occupancy conditions any longer, you normally want some kind of physical or functional relationship of a new house with the existing farm operation. For example, you know, in the environs of the steading or sharing an access or close to the steading. Um, I don't disagree that um, use of the term a short walk from the farm hub is less than helpful, to be generous. Okay, thank you. Henry, then Jeff. Yes, yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, I, I think Billy Pritt pretty much was summarising where I was going to come from because my understanding, looking at the appellant's uh, papers and the case officer, really the only issue appeared to be the citing. And I think that was really the, probably the decision that we were being left with today was whether we went with the, the the case officer's original decision or the information presented in front of us by the uh, uh, by the agent and the appeal. And um, in, in that case, uh, I'm quite happy to support a decision to reverse, uh, re reverse the case officer's decision on the view that I believe the citing is in accordance with the policy. Okay, thank you. Jeff. Thanks, Archie. Just in light of what um, Billy was saying about being close to the uh, existing operations on page 121 and the health and safety. I mean, it brought a smile to my lips when, it's, when it says, well known that farm settings are very dangerous places for children. Therefore, it would be irresponsible knowing this to a, rec a rec retirement home close to the setting in the knowledge of grandchildren their friends may be there frequently. I assume his children were brought up on the, uh, the farmhouse, but that's just by the by. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, but obviously there are, there are fire um, regulations and, and support there that says that you know it should be 100 metres away. Um, so if 100 metres is fine, that, that you know I'm, I'm I'm quite happy with that. Um, so is is that the clear decision of the local review body that the, the decision is reversed because of the the aforementioned reasons and the conditions or one of the conditions should be either single storey or one and a half storey house. Um, but also um, the, the conditions that Billy mentioned earlier on. Are we happy with that? Agreed. Okay. Agreed. Claire, can you confirm the decision? Agreed. Of the... Andrew, you state. Sorry, Andrew. Chair, you said a single story or a one and a half story. Yeah. It, do we have to be very specific with that or is that loose enough to allow them to go for either or? Billy, you may want to come in on this one. Yes. Um... I was going to come in and, and just take you through the conditions anyway, right. but first of all, to answer Councillor Justy's question, um, that would be enough, single or one and a half storey, um, that would give us the option of either. Um, I was going to ask if you wanted to include anything else in that condition in terms of particular design issues or rural design. Um, my advice would be that it's not really necessary um, that the design would be left up uh, to officers to decide in the further applications. Um, would you like me to just take you through the conditions just now, or do you want me to come back in? Yeah, yes, please, Billy, and I'll, I'll make, it, make it clear to everybody. Okay. It was just to clarify and confirm to you that if you're reversing the decision today, um, you would be granting permission subject to the conditions. Um, and first of all, those would be the standard reserve matters conditions, the first of which requires, uh, well, specifies that no development can take place until further applications have been submitted to address um, matters in the following conditions. And those matters are layout, design, external appearance and landscaping. So you would have these five, first five conditions. Then you would have the condition that you've proposed in terms of Notwithstanding these preceding conditions, any dwelling house shall be single or one and a half storey only. Um, you would then have the standard roads conditions as recommended by the council roads officer, 
covering a requirement for a lay-by, geometry of the access, visibility, etc. And in this case, there would also be a final condition uh, recommended by the Council Archaeologist uh, requiring a scheme of archaeological investigation to be undertaken before the development commenced. Yep. Everybody happy with that? Yep. Okay, thank you very much. Claire, can you just confirm? Okay, thank you, Chair. I can confirm that the local review body have agreed to reverse the decision of the appointed officer and I agree planning permission in principle to the direction of a dwelling house at Broomhill Farm, Broomhill Road, Loth Mayburn, um, as it meets the conditions of H3 and it will be subject to the, condi the conditions as just gone through by your planning advisor, in particular um, the additional ones being no more than one, one storey or oh, sorry, single or one and a half storey height, um, the rose condition and the archaeological investigation um, in addition to the standard reserve conditions. Okay, thank you. Billy, you got your hand up? Billy. No chair. Yeah, I thought you, you had your hand up, so you couldn't have took it down before. It's all right. Okay, members, I've, I've got nothing else to consider at this, this LRB. Thank you very much for your time, um, and we will see you sometime in the future. Stay safe, everybody. Keep well. Thanks very much, officers, for your support in this, uh, and I'll close the meeting at that. Okay. Bye, everyone. Thank Bye. you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks, Billy. Bye, Bye everyone.